Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Language can be a double-edged sword in multilingual societies. It is a keystone of cultural identity, but it can be a barrier to integration and educational success. This week on Learning World, we have reports from South Africa and the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. And we talk to an expert. Post-apartheid South Africa has 11 official languages, but English is increasingly dominant. At some schools, this is problematic for children who speak other languages at home. So, how do they cope? The small town of Elliot is home to nine-year-old Mbarsa Sodludla. He's a bright boy, but despite this, he's at a disadvantage. He's grown up speaking Kwarza, but South African schools do their exams in English and Afrikaans, so he has to learn a whole new language before he can understand his schoolwork. The result is an advantage for the English and Afrikaans children and the marginalization of African languages. But luckily for Mbarsa, his school is piloting a whole new approach to language. Elliot High School has adopted a groundbreaking new language policy, teaching children in two languages at the same time, their home language and English, for the first six years of school. Kids find it very difficult to conceptualise in a different language that's now not their mother tongue. And if these concepts need to be formed in another language, the child first needs to think in their mother tongue and then actually translate it into the language of learning and teaching. The solution is bilingual teaching for the first six years of school. They're taught in their mother tongue language from day one with teachers using Quarza for instruction and English as a support language. When I'm teaching English, if that learner doesn't understand, I must use the mother tongue in order for that learner to understand what I'm presenting to, to her or to him. Families feel more involved. Parents who have a low level of English can now help their children with their homework because it's in Quarza. From Barça, the teaching system has boosted his confidence. I like speaking two languages because if I make a friend who can't speak Kwaza, we can still communicate. We have moved away from the issue of access in terms of schools becoming uh, schools for white children, or for black children, or for African children. We have moved beyond that. But now it is a quality of meaningful education within the system. When you have already entered the system, how much do you leave the system with? That is going to make you feel that you can give back to the country. This appears to be a step in the right direction for fostering a truly multilingual society. It's a chance for children to have a far better education. Being bilingual from birth can be an advantage. And increasingly teachers believe that foreign language teaching should start at nursery school. But what are the ramifications of this in a country like the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia? In the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, tension exists between Albanian and Macedonian-speaking communities. Nationalistic politicians create schools for their own ethnic group, thereby separating children. Experts agree that this lack of bilingual education will extend today's problems far into the future. But there are some exceptions, such as the Mosaic Project in the Orse Nikolov Kindergarten in Skopje. It offers bilingual education in fully integrated groups, bringing together children from Macedonian and Albanian-speaking families. Vladan's son Filip enjoys playing with Dorian's daughter Deborah. My family is bilingual and I think that uh, that is the main advantage for him to understand that people are different, that they have different customs, they speak different language, but that he can live with them and play with them and have fun with them. It's good for parents and children to be in close contact with Macedonian customs and culture. All the parents are invited to celebrate uh, their child's birthday in the kindergarten. Uh, we, are, we are preparing ourselves for that event. We, uh, 
while bringing some photos, telling the stories uh, from his childhood. The parents' participation at the kindergarten is important. Parents and teachers speak in their own language. From early morning to late afternoon, the group is in permanent contact with two teachers, one Albanian and one Macedonian speaking. It's all about connecting to the other language group as early as possible. But out of the 130 families attending the kindergarten, only 20 have chosen the bilingual option. The project is called Mosaic and began operating in 1998. Yes, I think that it should be implemented because finally we have to understand that we have to live together, not by side by side, but together. I strongly believe that if something like this continues in all our kindergartens, schools and universities, things would look completely different from how they are today. While there is a waiting list to join the Mosaic project in this neighbourhood, in most Macedonian towns and villages, ethnic pressures still exist for a single language approach. It's possible that the Mosaic project could change the education system in the country and show that bilingualism is better for the future. All over the world, many people are brought up speaking two or more languages. So, are two languages better than one? Let's hear about a more academic approach from Barbara Abdel Ilah Bauer, an expert on bilingualism in Paris. More than 40% of the children born in Paris in 2008 had at least one foreign parent, if not both. Despite that, French always dominates to the detriment of the child's second language. We spoke to Barbara Abdelila Bauer, an expert on bilingualism and an advocate for the mixing of cultures. We know that more than half the people in the world are bilingual or multilingual. Sophie has just turned five and she already speaks three languages. At home she plays using both French and German with her father and also Spanish with her mother. It sounds simple, but Cecilia and Simon asked for the advice of experts on what the ideal learning environment would be for their child. We were told that the best for Sophie would be that each parent only speaks to her in one language. When we're in Germany, she speaks with her grandmother in German, and when we were in Argentina for the summer, she communicated in Spanish. One day a week, Sophie goes to a German school. Bilingualism has been a real success for this family, but for others, it's a real headache. That's when Barbara Abdelila Bauer steps in. She's a psychosociologist specializing in bilingualism and has given dozens of couples advice on how to achieve a positive outcome for a child in a mixed language environment. There are more than 5 million people in France who have a mother tongue other than French, wherever they are hesitant to use it with their children. When somebody speaks English or French, generally we say it's wonderful that their child will master two major international languages. The same can't be said when the child speaks French and Chinese, French and Arabic or, say, Turkish and Serbo-Croat. Society has a negative image of those languages. As a linguist, I see it as a great opportunity to speak another language, but that's not the way everybody sees it. At the Musée du Quai Branly in Paris, extinct languages are well documented. Experts are aiming for a future where every language and culture has a place in the world. Barbara is determined to change French society's complex with bilingualism. A child can learn as many languages as necessary in order to communicate. If the youngster's father speaks one language, his mother another, his grandmother something else, and the nanny speaks another language, then the child will be able to speak four languages. There are countries where people communicate in six different languages every day. Barbara Abdelila Bauer is convinced that in the future there will be more bilingual people and the world will become a less foreign place. Well, here's some feedback from a French citizen in Tunisia. Her first language is German. She also speaks Tunisian Arabic and now she's learning standard Arabic to help her children integrate in a new society. She's finding it a tough challenge. What do you think and do you agree? Let us know. Goodbye for now. 
Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.